Okay, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about uh, putting together a perimeter grounding system um, for lightning protection and also static reduction for ham radio uh, reception. This goes along with my previous video of building a uh, ham radio antenna grounding box, so you might want to check that out. So before we get started on the actual grounding system, perimeter ground, I wanted to talk a little bit about connectors. There are several different connectors that are used. I've seen um, in rare cases, and I have one of them in my house, a, uh, a, a stainless steel uh, hose clamp that connects the wire to the uh, ground rod. Um, I don't recommend that. Um, there are other connectors which I think do a better job. Uh, this is one of them. This is a saddle clamp. Uh, however, this is for in-house use, interior use only. The ground rod goes through the middle here. It's got teeth on it that really grab it and then the um, wire goes through this this little uh, hole here and it's screwed down. Um, this is um, a acorn connector. These are what's used for external burial or in, in the ground burial and they say right on them DB which stands for direct burial and the way these work and, and they come in different sizes this is a half inch this is uh, 5 eighths this is 5 eighths these two or three quarters uh, the way these work is the wire goes through on the V section here of the, uh, the acorn connector and the pipe goes in here on the other side and then the screw pushes on the one side of the uh, ground rod and it squeezes the wire that's on the other side of the ground rod. And it works, works pretty well. Uh, this is another connector that's commonly used. Uh, I think I only used this once but it is a, basically a copper bolt uh, with, with a threaded nut and it squeezes the ground rod again on one side and the wire on the other. Uh, the ground rods I'm going to be using are the standard ground rods you see at uh, most home improvement stores. They're half inch by eight foot long. Um, they're, they're made of steel because when you pound them, uh, if they weren't steel, if they were just pure copper, first of all it would be very expensive and secondly it uh, collapse like a piece of spaghetti. So they're steel with copper cladding on the outside. They're eight feet long. The code says they got to be um, pounded into the ground eight feet at least straight down or at an angle if you can't get them um, straight down. Um, the way I put them in is with a sledgehammer. The dirt around here I can go down about three or four, five feet maybe and then I start to hit resistance. Um, what I do is I just keep pounding and I'll go through these small fist sized boulders or fist sized rocks. If I happen to hit a big boulder, then I got to pull it up and move it over a foot. The code also says that these ground rods should be at least six feet apart. Mine are between 10 and 14 feet apart. Um, the wire we're going to be using is the, what the code says is the minimum gauge, and that's number six stranded. Uh, you can't use number eight or number 10. Uh, you can use, of course, number four or number two, which is bigger. I use number six just for economy and because that's what the, the code requires. Okay, so now let's take a look at some examples of um, um, situations where, where these are connected. By the way, um, when you pound the ground rod into the ground, you're probably going to mushroom the top of it. So you either got to put these connectors on first or you won't get them over there. If you have a half inch ground rod, you, you, what I did was I didn't just didn't use a half inch acorn connector, I used a 5 8 one. So even though the top got mushroom from the, from the blows of the sledgehammer, I was still able to fit a 5 8 inch acorn connector over it. Okay, let's take a look at some uh, examples. Okay, I hope you can see this. Uh, this is where the grounding perimeter ground starts. You see that wall plate there? Uh, that wall plate connects to a ground rod on the other side of the plywood or uh, in the middle of the uh, the wall. Uh, so when I before I built the house, I put a ground rod in the in the ground about eight feet, and I connected it up to this wall outlet, uh, which which is uh, connected to the perimeter ground. So this is where really where the perimeter ground starts. Uh, you can see a wire then going from the plate up to a saddle clamp and then connecting to a three-quarter inch 
cop a piece of copper tubing and it's held off by standoffs. Uh, the reason I use that is uh, we had a renovation project here a few years ago and we moved a lot of copper tubing out and put in radiant heat so I had a lot of uh, copper tubing left over that was three quarter inch. Now you could use half inch copper tubing or uh, some other uh, material uh, conduit if you wanted to uh, uh, reproduce this. So this goes into the back of my one of my benches and let me show you that right here. You can see that the tube tubing actually goes right across uh, this bench. This bench here is my lab bench and I can show you that in a minute. And then continues through the rest of the uh, the shack. Let me show you here. This is the uh, the lab bench. Goes underneath this this bench. You can see here. Goes behind the computer, right there. And goes across to the ham radio bench, or the the uh, where, where all the radios are. And it goes underneath this as well. And then it comes up on the right side of the bench from underneath and you can see it in the corner there it's going up it goes across the wall and then goes into the next room and you see a wire there that's connecting the ground to my home automation system okay let's follow it through the wall okay this is where it comes through the wall and you can see a wire coming out of there that wire goes to the pump, uh, my water pump, which is uh, grounded to the electrical box. And then it goes behind this storage. You can see here, it's the pipe. And it takes a jog up a little bit. It's hanging from the wall. See with those, those hangers. It goes over here and connects to another saddle clamp and wire which goes over to a cold water pipe in the in the boiler room which is where we are then it ends here and goes to another saddle clamp to a, a number six wire which goes to the outside part of the perimeter uh, grounding system which I'll show you next okay here we are outside and you can see this is where the green wire, I don't know if you can see the green wire, it goes down that flexible tube in the back and then it goes to right here. Now this, this uh, is a what's called a sewer clean out or a drain clean out and I did that so I could inspect the connection. So all you have to do is just unscrew that and you can see the the connection, the, the uh, ground rod goes in eight feet level with the top of the ground, but there is a little space there. And what I did is every time there's a uh, two connections to a ground rod, I used two acorn connectors. And the code says you can do that. You could use only one if you stripped the uh, ground wire, the number six ground wire, in the middle and ran it through. But in this case, I ran it from from the uh, uh, inside. To, to this ground connector and then from the ground connector to the next one uh, which is over to this way to the left so I can inspect them and uh, I also put some dielectric grease on there to uh, reduce corrosion. Dielectric grease is what they use you can get in automotive stores on your battery terminals in your car to prevent corrosion so then I uh, went over here and went to the next connection which is underground here in this location. I haven't marked it yet, but I intend to. Um, this does not have a, uh, um, a, a, a sewer screw cap on it, um, but that may happen. Uh, and here is the, the grounding box that's in my other video. And you can see on the right uh, the wires that go to the shack, and on the left are the wires that go to the antenna. And that flexible tubing at the bottom that you see right here, that's the ground connection that grounds the grounding box uh, in the ground to this connection right here in the corner. And then from there, we go behind the air conditioning unit, which I'm trying to get here. And it goes over to right here. And you'll see another connection right here. 
and this goes behind this is a, a valve box for the sprinkler system so that connection there then goes behind the valve box over to this connection which is right here and this this uh, screw cap is actually buried um, but you can see this is where the meter is and it ties to the um, the uh, breaker box inside the house, the circuit breaker box inside the house. And then there's two, there's another one, another ground that goes here that the utility company put in because the code says if you're not below a certain number of ohms, 25 ohms, you gotta put in two rods. So rather than measure them, they just put in two. So there's one there and one here also. So then we go inside and we'll look at the uh, grounding box, uh, the uh, circuit breaker box. Okay, this is the uh, breaker box in the house, the main breakers. There's two panels. Um, this is the other one. And then down here, you can see the ground rod that they put in when they built the house. Now I'm not sure why they did this. Maybe the code was old, but they stuck two wires underneath one acorn connector, which I believe today violates the code. Anyway, one wire goes to the breaker box. The other wire takes off and goes to the water pipe. Um, that brings water in from the from the town um, so that's how it's it's uh, connected okay we're back in the lab I just wanted to make a couple of uh, more points um, the conductive mat you see on top of the lab bench that's connected to the ground and over here in the amateur radio bench all the radios as well as the computer are connected to a single point on the uh, pipe in the back of the bench the copper tubing. Um, so this is where all of the grounds really um, uh, for radios and lab stuff connect. Um, and then along the, the perimeter inside and outside there's connections to well, like I said utility or the actual ground. So that's it. If you have any comments or questions I'll try to answer them. Uh, please hit like if you like this video and also subscribe. Thank you.